The teapot in Genshin Impact has been a great addition to the game. It's only been out for three months, and yet even with the limited amount of blueprints and time, people have created some really impressive builds and flexed their creativity. Maybe in some ways not exactly intended by the devs. It's been a while. I've grown quite a bit stronger. The foundation's there for this to rival some of the best housing systems on the market, and honestly, if they continue the trajectory of adding in and optimizing a couple things for the teapot every patch like they've been doing, I think it's possible this will turn into an insane system. As it is right now, at least as of 2.0, there's still a ton that needs to be improved on to reach that point. Before we dive in, hitting the video with a like and even subscribing to the channel does go a long way to help out this young, star-studded slime making his way in the world. And uh, without further ado, this is my wish list of 10 mechanics and features I'd love to see in future patches. It's weird that we have so many buildings and structures to make pretty convincing looking towns and yet no roads or paths to signify actual streets. A grid system is already in the game, as well as a furniture snapping mechanic, and both already work great without any need for major tweaking. These systems are perfect for pathing, so I don't think it'll be a question of if we'll get pathing, but when. Personally, I would love to see at least one path type per major city, and maybe the addition of a dirt road? One of my favorite parts about Dark Cloud 2's Georama is being able to make my own systems of rivers and ponds, so imagine if we had that in Genshin. I'm telling you, everyone's gardens would level up exponentially. But even if we were just relegated to basic streets and pathing, I think it would do wonders to really tidy up our abodes and make them feel more like actual settlements. In the same vein, it would be great if we had more control of the grass that's auto-generated on the ground. It already automatically goes away when we place down outdoor furnishings. If I take this rock and I drag it around the ground, you can actually see the trail of grass go away and then respawn back in. So I'd love the ability to more finely control where it shows up or where it doesn't. It'd also be really nice if we could pick the grass's color. Being able to use Liyue's yellow grass or Inazuma's blue and purples would really help so much with making themed towns using their blueprints. And for the third item, I swear to god, this is going to be the last wishlist item that's about dirt. <laughs> The rocky landforms you buy from the Traveling Merchant Boys are my favorite furnishings in this system. I put them everywhere to prop buildings up and lend more depth to backgrounds. I even made a video showcasing my teapot and how I like to use them. <laughs> wink wink nudge nudge check that out if you haven't. But these rocky landforms actually have one glaring problem. Them boys nakey. There's no grass on top of them, so if you actually climb up them they look weirdly shiny and almost plasticky. Because of this, I never really intend to use the landforms as actual extensions of my areas. I don't intend for people to actually climb up on them and run around on top of them. So right now at least, they're exclusively for window dressing. If we had the ability to put grass down on them though, I would feel way more inclined to use them as actual extensions of the land. Part of my hang up with using rocky landforms is also that there's no convenient way to get up them. At least not if you missed out on joining the Kazuha Master Race. More boys assemble! The rocky landforms already follow a really strict height guideline of either one or two units tall. So if we had a few sets of stairs and ramps that were all one unit tall, it wouldn't be any issue to link them together. This would open up an infinite void of possibilities with planning out towns and making plateaus of different heights. As long as they find a way to seamlessly incorporate the paths alongside these stairs, and as long as there aren't any janky connections to those paths like an Animal Crossing, this would be an absolute game changer. For this next one, I want to put out a disclaimer. I actually don't expect load limits to increase by much, if at all. Because think about it, even with the current restrictions, every single account can load up hundreds of unique items, all with their own positions and rotations, and you can do this across three different unique realms. That's a lot of data. Multiply that by however many millions of active players there currently are using the teapot system and honestly I think it's a miracle that we have as much load as we currently do. If miHoYo finds a way to better optimize things and give us more room to stuff more screens into the naughty shell corner, <laughs> then by all means I'm here for it. But what I do want them to tweak however is the way they communicate the load. 
Right now, the only indication we have is playing a game of red light, green light, and it's a really obnoxious game to play to figure out how much more can fit in an area. I really hope we get a concrete numerical value that shows just how much load remains in each area, along with maybe a number on the furnishings UI which shows how much load each individual item takes up. Communicating how much load each item takes up would go such a long way in being able to plan a layout better than using Excel spreadsheets and graph paper. Uh, <laughs> not that I've devolved to that <clears throat> or anything. Now, I love the aesthetic of the Emerald Peaks realm, but the Mondstadt music that plays there isn't really my favorite. I mean, look, don't get me wrong, it's still great because it's Genshin music, but it just doesn't hit the same way as like the Guyan Stone Force themes that play in the Cool Isle realm, you know? I would love the ability to unlock a custom music player for our teapots. Imagine it. They could go the Final Fantasy XIV direction of locking songs behind achievements and endgame content. They could essentially add a whole new category in the archives for all us completionists to go hunting. I think it'd be really cool if we could designate a different theme for each of the four sub areas in every realm. It'd really help us set the exact mood and atmosphere for the layouts of our dreams. The photo mode in Genshin is already pretty decent. It's a little clunky compared to the photo modes in other games, but it does have plenty of options with depth of field and hiding characters from view. And it's also already incorporated into a bunch of world quests. You remember those archipelago quests that use the mural photos to solve puzzles? They're some of my favorite quests in the game. I love when the camera's incorporated into things. We also already have NPCs that act as vendors for different advances in camera tech. So here's my pitch. Why not have them come up with a way to develop our screenshots and let us hang up those screenshots in our houses? It gives another way to incorporate the camera into gameplay, and it's going to be a huge incentive for players to get artsy and actually use the camera to look for cool shots. I think right now there's a severe lack of unique wall furnishings. We literally only have three unique pictures and three unique scrolls, and if you include the other six wall items like the Favonius Crest, that's still only 12 unique wall furnishings. You expect me to fill up an entire mansion with these Andes? Bro. So instead of putting in the work to create a bunch of boring, static wall furnishings, why not put it into the player's hands and let them shoot their own landscape shots to hang up around the house? Basically, if you can tell, this is basically my stepping stone to achieving the perfect child shrine. I love him, his noble curiosity, his cool, keen powers of observation, his unfaltering sense of right and wrong. Uh, speaking of dreams becoming reality, these beds are looking mighty empty. Hmm. Would be a shame to, <laughs> say, unleash a mating press. I think it's really hype that we can invite party members into the teapot, especially with all the unique conversations they have and all the little moments you can share with them and the furnishing gift sets. I just wish that they could use the furniture more like we can. Even something as simple as just letting them sit in the chairs would go such a long way to making them look less awkward. Because right now, all they can do is stand around and it's starting to freak me out. They're just staring at me. There are some outside furnishings that would benefit so much from being able to go inside and vice versa. Like, why is the phonograph that Alice gave us locked outside when we don't even have a table that it can be put on? Ah, yeah, let me just put this beloved present from my favorite traveling blogger in the business in the dirt where it belongs, says MiHoYo. Clearly not chairman in the number one Alice fan club like ya boy. Here's the thing too, we already have a furnishing that can go both inside and out. The vegetable rack you buy from Tubby. So clearly, there's no technical constraint behind this weird divide. Obviously, stuff like the Monset windmill wouldn't qualify for going inside. Although, now that I say it out loud, <laughs> cramming a windmill in the entryway does sound pretty hype. Uh, either way though, there are just so many interior furnishings that would look great outside, and similarly, stuff like the benches would look awesome inside. Let me tell ya, as a courtyard wall flinging Andy, nothing's more upsetting than doing an entire layout only to come to the last corner piece and realize you were too far over by half a block. And now, uh oh, gotta scrap the entire thing because there's no way to select multiple items at once if they aren't part of one of the pre-made furnishing sets. It'd be hype if we could create our own custom furnishing sets.
Not only would it let us select multiple items at once, which would just be very handy, but it could also easily copy-paste designs from one realm to another without needing to recreate everything from scratch. This file request is a bit of a weird one. There's about a 50-50 split between flat furnishings you can place ornaments on and flat furnishings where you can't. This is a weird request because I feel like it shouldn't be an issue to begin with. I really like furnishings like the dark wood scroll shelves, but the fact that I can't place anything on top of them while I can place stuff on top of the hearth is weird to me. So what do you think? Personally, I feel like all of these changes aren't asking for a ton, but then again, I'm also just a stinky boy playing video games and eating Dorito, so I don't know the extent of how convoluted the teapot's programming actually is. Either way, if there's anything I missed that you'd love to see included in future patches, let me know. If there's enough extra ideas, I'd love to make a follow-up video using your ideas. Again, we're still super early into the teapot's lifespan, so I have full confidence that we'll continue to see improvement after improvement to the core systems. I mean, just look at how the base game was at launch compared to now. Night and day difference. And hey, thanks a ton for watching. Again, if you like the vid and the dulcet tones coming from my big gob, subscribing really does a ton to help me out. On top of this teapot wishlist, I also want to make a wishlist of general gameplay mechanics and quality of life improvements that I'd also like to see incorporated. So if you have any suggestions for quality of life improvements you'd like to see for the base game too, let me know. I'm all ears. Let me slurp you up. Mmm. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some pressing matters to attend to. Get over! Get